last the time has come. Welcome back for our part two of the hydrotherapy. Um, this part right here, we're going to dive right to it. Um, before we dive right into it, we're just going to have maybe just a couple more videos to show you about the contraindication and the safety. But before we do that, I'm going to ask our Lord to um, guide us and protect us from all these uh, equipment that I have anyway. Sometimes they, they go, go down. Heavenly Father, thank you, my Holy One, for being our God. Oh, my Holy One, thank you so much. Be, be with us as you promise, and we claim your promise in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So, let's start right on it. Before we start, um, we have a little medical disclaimer, which I'm just going to read. It says, this course is not intended to provide medical advice or to be a substitute for a visit to your own doctor. Use of this course does not create a doctor-patient relationship. Information in this course is provided for informational purposes only and is not meant to substitute for the advice provided by your own physician or other medical professional. Okay, and so we will have, um, uh, first off, we will have Susan Palandini. She is the, um, uh, the message hydrotherapy instructor in Weimar College. Um, I believe she's still there anyway, but uh, we got all the, her instruction book. Um, as a matter of fact, there's a lot of videos, because I'm not going to show you all these anyway, because you pretty much probably saturated about all the video that you have. So we're going to dive right to it. But before, again, before we start um, about how the, the, the hydrotherapy is being done, we're well, just going to give these two important video about contraindication. Let's talk about some of the cautions and contraindications for hydrotherapy treatments. Contraindications would be conditions that you would not want to use a treatment for. If you have some misunderstanding about some of the terms that we use in this series, you can refer to the definitions of terms in our supplemental material. Let's talk about first the cautions for hydrotherapy treatments. We can still do treatments on these conditions, but we will need to alter slightly the protocol to meet their needs. People with ADD are usually on medications to control that, and so these meds alter the skin sensation of their body. Aversion to cold or Renaud syndrome, that's usually with the hands and the feet. Children, they're not able to communicate what they are sensing or feeling. A small body size will transfer heat much faster than someone with a bigger build. Elderly clients, their nervous system tends to shut down a little bit the older they get, and so we need to alter the treatment for them. HIV or AIDS, cancer or tumors, pregnancy, extremely obese clients or subjects, people with limited mobility. For instance, if someone has a bilateral knee replacement, they will not be able to get in and out of a bathtub very easily. And lastly, the inability to talk. If someone cannot communicate with you, they will not be able to describe what they are sensing. Now for the contraindications. Okay, so this is a list of where you would not want to do hydrotherapy. Uh, people with these conditions need to be referred to a medical facility. Someone who has convulsions, coma, severe vomiting or diarrhea, difficulty breathing, sudden onset, paralysis of the face or limbs, coughing or vomiting blood, blood in the urine or the stool, painful urination, and unconsciousness. One or more hydrotherapy treatments may be contraindicated for clients with the following. Acute local inflammation, artificial devices such as pacemakers or chemotherapy ports, asthma, circulatory system conditions, diabetes, inability to sense hot or cold, intoxication, a large meal, it's good to wait one hour after eating a large meal to perform a hydrotherapy treatment. Lymphedema, which is swelling due to disease or surgery. 
multiple sclerosis, nerve injuries, peripheral vascular disease, prescription medications, seizure disorders, skin infections or rashes, and thyroid disorders. Again, you don't completely not do treatments on these kinds of people, but there will be certain hydrotherapy treatments that you would not want to do. Knowing these conditions will help you choose an appropriate and safe treatment for your subject. Great that we have the uh, contraindication uh, warrant. Now, before we dive in where the rubber meets the road, we'll do one more careful safety first. Let's talk about some safety considerations or precautions that you want to be mindful of when doing a hydrotherapy treatment. First of all, use common sense. Explain what, how, and why of the treatment to the subject you are treating. So for instance, checking the temperature of the hot or the cold application and using a thermometer for accuracy. Have all the equipment ready ahead of time before starting. Once you have started a treatment, you don't want to be running into the other room to get something else or uh, forgetting that you forgot to put ice in the freezer and so you don't have ice. You want everything ready ahead of time. Use active listening communication skills throughout the treatment. An example of this would be if you have a local hot application on somebody, you ask them, how does that feel? And the subject replies, oh, that feels good. Well, does that mean good as in it's adequate temperature? Is it good as in, well, it's too hot, it needs to be cooled down a bit? Or is it really just good? You can ask them those specific questions to get exactly what they are sensing. Be observant of nonverbal communication. So your client says that everything feels well and adequate, but yet they're squirming or they have a funny look on their face. Try and figure out what they are communicating. Stay within calling distance of your client. If you leave the room, they can feel agitated or insecure, and so just stay nearby. Be mindful of being too chatty or talkative. Sometimes if someone is really sick, they have a migraine, they don't want extra noise and communication going on. Be encouraging as the client tolerates the treatment. They may be trying to, for instance, sweat out some toxins. Maybe they've been under a lot of heavy drug medication or they have mercury toxicity and they need to go through a sweating treatment. That can seem a little uncomfortable for them. And so you are their biggest coach and encourager. Never treat beyond the client's tolerance. If the client becomes extremely uncomfortable and they want to stop, immediately end the treatment. Observe and document the effects of the treatment. Never treat an already cold client with cold water or ice. Always keep the head cool during the heat treatment. The brain does not tolerate heat. Keep all body parts covered that are not being treated. Be mindful of water spills on a slippery tiled floor. Protect the furniture or flooring from potential water spills. Keep the area neat and organized as much as possible. Sometimes it can be agitating to a client if you're running around your little treatment area trying to find the next piece of equipment. Prevent burns from handling hot packs or steam. So you yourself, as treating someone else, are going to have to protect yourself with maybe utility gloves so that you don't burn your own hands. No oils or lotions are to be used in whirlpool tubs. Have non-slip shoes to prevent slipping or falling. Grab bars next to showers and tubs are useful for people that are a little unsteady. Thoroughly towel dry the subject immediately after treatment to prevent chilling. Allow the subject to rest at least 30 minutes post-treatment for the body to return to homeostasis or balance. And disinfect all equipment that has been touched or used. These considerations that we just discussed will ensure a safe environment for your subject. Yes, now that we're, a, well, 
we got the contraindication and also the safety first uh, out of the way. Um, I don't mean to rush this, um, but I know this is where, the, where you're excited at, where the rubber meets the road. We're going to start with foot bath. We're going to have four um, demonstration uh, of these videos. Um, well, we're going to start with foot bath. Um, here we go. We're going to start now. The contrast foot bath is a powerful treatment that does not alter the vital signs. So the definition of the contrast foot bath is a series of hot submersion baths contrasted by cold submersion baths to the feet. The leg can also be submerged as high as on the thigh as needed for the condition involved. So what are the physiological effects of the contrast foot bath? The blood vessels will dilate in the hot foot bath or they will expand. The blood vessels will constrict or narrow in the cold foot bath. Thereby circulation is increased without warming the deeper tissues. So here are the treatment conditions or indications. Poor circulation in the feet, tendonitis in the feet or ankles. So obviously the water needs to cover the ankles for this. Derivation of the migraine headache. We can draw blood away from the head to relieve the headache. Ankle sprains, plantar fasciitis, diabetic neuropathy. Now for this, make sure you are under a physician's care when you are treating somebody with diabetic neuropathy. Arthritis, rheumatoid or osteo, gout, and reduced soreness after exercise or excessive work. So some contraindications or conditions that you would not want to do this for. Hypertension or high blood pressure. Renaud syndrome. For this, it would be more of a caution. You could use cold water between 70 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Lymphedema due to disease. Peripheral vascular disease. Here again, this would be a caution where you would only need 20 degree difference instead of a vast difference of extreme temperature. So let's just make that clear. If you're using water at 101 degrees, the cold would only be 81. So that's your 20 degree difference. Arterial sclerosis, which is hardening of the arteries. You'd want to be under physician's care when treating this condition and the unconscious person. Here's the equipment that you would need for the contrast foot bath. Two dish pans or similar containers large enough to immerse the feet to the ankles. Hot water between 101 and 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Cold water between 55 and 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Extra ice for cold bath. Extra hot water to maintain the hot bath three bath towels, a digital thermometer, a time device, Epsom salts or other bath additives could be optional. And prayer is important for these treatments to bring the person into the presence of the divine healer. So here's the procedure of the contrast foot bath. Clear your client for contraindications and take vital signs. Explain the treatment procedure to the client and get their consent to treat. Place one towel on the floor where the basins of water will be. Fill one basin with hot water at desired temperature. Fill the other basin with the desired cold water temperature. Use the thermometer to get accurate reading. If you are in a remote or primitive area and you don't have access to a thermometer, use your elbow to test test the hot water for five seconds. And if the water is not burning your elbow, then it is probably safe enough for the client. Assist the recipient or the subject in placing their bare feet in the hot water for three to five minutes. Switch to the cold bath for 30 seconds. Switch back to the hot bath for three minutes. Switch to the cold for 30 seconds. Repeat these steps between the three minutes hot and 30 seconds cold at least three cycles or longer if need be. 
the client can move their feet in water to encourage mechanical stimulation if you want more stimulation. After the last 30 second switch, towel dry the feet thoroughly. Dress the feet, retake vital signs, and record the treatment. You want to begin these treatments with prayer because that is really who the healer is, is the God of heaven. Yes, always start with hot and end it with cold. Three minutes hot, 30 seconds cold. Now this one I like, I use this a lot, contrast shower. It really does boost up my, your immune system. In this segment, we're going to talk about the contrast shower. The definition of the contrast shower is a series of hot showers between 102 and 110 degrees Fahrenheit, altered by cold showers, 55 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit, with the hot segment lasting longer than the cold segment. Here are the effects of the contrast shower. We will be stimulating the thermal receptors, or the hot and cold receptors in the body, which is going to vastly increase the circulation throughout the body. Stimulating the body as it tries to throw off heat during the hot phase and conserving heat during the cold phase. This again is going to strongly increase the circulation. The immunity will be increased by those white blood cells circulating through the circulatory system. The mechanical receptors in the skin are stimulated by the pressure from the shower. So this increases the person's ability to sense or feel. Here are the indications or the conditions for receiving a contrast shower. Stimulating blood flow to the skin, thereby relieving congestion of internal organs. Lethargy or fatigue. It serves as a tonic or it helps to tone the skin, vessels underneath, and the muscles. This can prevent soreness after vigorous exercise or work. Prevent development of a migraine headache if you do this quick enough. Prevent the onset of respiratory cold or flu. Or shorten the duration of respiratory cold or flu. Develop better tolerance to cold winter weather. Advanced diabetes. So here are some cautions for the contrast showers. So this means that you wouldn't use this in the typical protocol, but just maybe back off on the temperature or do it just a little bit differently, and I will explain that. For advanced diabetes, you only want to use 20 degrees difference in temperature. So if you have the hot at 102 degrees, the cold will go down to 82. Loss of sensation. Again, the same thing. Use only 20 degrees difference in temperature. Pregnancy. Again, only 20 degrees difference in temperature. Hyperthyroidism. People that suffer with hyperthyroidism should not too frequently receive these showers. Thyroid is already overactive enough. The inability to tolerate heat or cold use less extreme temperature. So the contraindications or conditions that you would not want to do this treatment Lymphedema due to disease or surgery, advanced cardiovascular disease, advanced renal or kidney disease, multiple sclerosis, seizure disorders, extreme obesity, a recent meal, you want to wait at least one hour, a chilled person, ingestion of alcohol or illegal drugs. Here's the equipment that you need for the contrast shower. Obviously a shower stall, hot and cold water, a thermometer, a container to measure the temperature of the water, a bath towel, a bath mat. You may need to have grab bars on the sides for people that are unsteady to hang on to. A body brush or a loofah sponge for extra mechanical stimulation if desired. This will make the treatment more intense, and a time device. It's good to include prayer in these treatments, giving God the opportunity to heal the person and not yourself. 
Here's the procedure of how to give a contrast shower. Check the health history and clear for cautions or contraindications and consent to treat for the person. Take vital signs and explain the treatment to your subject. Have the client undress to their bathing suit. Place the bath mat on the floor in front of the shower. Turn on the water in the shower using the thermometer to adjust the hot water temperature to the desired level for your subject. Have your subject enter the hot shower and remain for three to five minutes until thoroughly warm. Change the water to cold using the thermometer to check the temperature for the desired level. Remain in the cold for 30 seconds no longer than one minute. Change the water back to hot for three minutes, checking the temperature. Change the water back to cold for 30 to 60 seconds, checking the temperature. And then you can repeat those above steps between the hot and the cold for a minimum of three cycles or longer, depending on the desire of the effect for your client. After the last cycle of cold, turn off the water as the client steps out onto the bath mat. Have the client thoroughly towel dry briskly. Have the client dress to stay warm. Retake vital signs and record the treatment. Yes, always end it with prayer when um, you have a patient working on. Now this one is the one that we all you've been waiting for. This is the fomentation and foot bath. This is the one that was explained from the previous about what we can do in COVID-19. Remember that five days and 12 days, the seven days that we can possibly do if you're uh, 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 tested positive? Well, here's the one that their recommendation. Now here it will be uh, Barbara O'Neill, an Australian naturopath and lecturer on health issues. Um, it's the only one I could find that is uh, uh, fomentation and foot bath that is, I think it's excellent the way they did it here. So this video here is going to take about maybe 15, 16 minutes, but that's the whole duration of the fomentation and foot bath. Again, what is, uh, that may possibly, that we can use for COVID-19. Here we go. So now I'm going to show you how you can do it to the chest. Now there's a couple of ways you can do this. You can wet a towel, wring it out, roll it up, and you can heat it up in a microwave, but I'm not very um, microwave savvy. So I'm going to show you the old way. And that is to dip towels into very, very hot water. And we're going to lay it. We're just going to pretend that Joshua has a very severe chest infection. In fact, it can be pneumonia, it can be bronchitis, it can be asthma, whatever it is. And the type of, type of water we're going to use is the water in a gas state. It is steam. Now what I'm dealing with here is boiling water which gives off steam. Now there are certain things that you can do which I will show you so that you will never burn. It's alright Joshua, I've never burnt anyone. And the way, so I'm going to be applying steam to his chest, but I'm going to be doing it in a way that he, it, will not, it will not burn his skin. So there are some basic um, procedures that you can do to do this. So we're going to endeavour to do three minutes hot, 30 seconds ice cold. I've got a nice big lump of ice in this one here. <laughs> but it's all right, I will not apply it to Joshua until he's nice and warm. Because we're warm-blooded creatures, you always begin with the hot and you always end with the cold. Now what I have here is I have um, Joshua's feet in a bucket of hot water. And for the whole procedure, which will be about 15 minutes, his feet will be in hot water. I have a kettle of boiling water there. And every now and then I will check that to make sure it's, um, it, keeps, it keeps its heat. So... One of the things you do to prevent burning the skin is you put a dry towel there. So I'm going to begin by putting the dry uh, hand towel there. So there's my dry hand towel. So Joshua, I'll just get you to take your shirt off. One of the little boys asked if I could do it to him. I said his chest's not big enough. <laughs> so you see I've got a dry 
a dry towel down there and I'm just going to wrap the rest of Joshua up. So you can see his towel there and I've got boiling water here and it was we found we found it hard to get some nice thin towels because everyone towels are nice and thick nowadays and you fold it like this this is a nice old one you might have to go to the second hand shop and get some nice old thin towels and you twist it and you dip it into the boiling water and you leave the ends out so that you can twist it and when you twist it, you can get all the water out. I, um, I lived in a rainforest for 12 years and I learnt this method from books. <laughs> and they're old books and this is the old way of doing it. And by twisting it, you can get all the water out, but my hands aren't burnt because I've got the dry end. as well I do my push-ups, eh? Yeah. Now that will remain hot for quite a while. In fact, it's boiling hot. And I'm just going to get another towel here. So what you can do, and remember that's keeping its heat, and then I very quickly let it come out. Very quickly. And I'm just going to make it into a pack about the size of Joshua's chest, which will be about that. Ah, that's hot. And I can wrap it up and then I can walk over to my treatment room where Joshua is. And I pull this out and I lay it on and then I cover him up. And then I'm going to talk to Joshua. I've got a nice little piece of wool here and the wool will keep it. Now, Joshua, how is it? Very hot. Too hot? Yep. Okay, so what I do now is I lift the towel up and I wipe the moisture off his chest. And it's the moisture on the chest that may burn. And then I come back down and I say to Joshua, how's things? Very hot still. Very hot. We come up again and, we, and he will never burn if I do this. And I just use my hand to wipe that moisture off. And this is Joshua's first one. So it's going to take a few times. How is it, Joshua? Still quite hot. Still too hot? And I said to Joshua, you must tell me. You're not allowed to be brave. And I'm just taking the moisture off the skin. It's the moisture on the skin. It's the steam that penetrates very deep. How's that, Joshua? Bitter. Better? Yeah. <laughs> Bitter. Sorry, it's New Zealand. <laughs> Never press. You never press, you just sit it and let the steam go in. Too hot. Too hot. Okay, and I washed Joshua carefully and I talked to Joshua this morning. How's that? Getting hotter now. Too hot? Yeah. Okay, too hot. We wipe it again. You've got to work with the person. I can assure you that after I've done a cold washer on Joshua, he will be able to handle more. Okay, so I just, see you just wipe that moisture off the skin. It's the moisture on the skin that may burn. How's that? Yeah, it's fine. Ah, oh, that's fine. That's good. That's good. So we're looking at about three minutes. Um, sometimes about this time the patient might like a cool cloth on your head. Would you like a cool cloth on your head? Yes, please. Oh, he does. You see what you're doing? You're reading them, you're reading them. Nice? Yeah. Oh, nice. See, that gets hot very, very quickly. Because remember your heat. Now, this is very, very good training for Joshua because Joshua would like to become a doctor. Isn't this good training? This is the best training. Is that enough? Yeah. Is the, is the chest all right? Um, too hot. No. Too hot? Now, you see, I started to read that. He started to move a little bit uncomfortably. That's why you can, you, can, you can get more out of reading a person's body language, yeah? 
and he's being very polite. Never let the air get to any wet bit because that will chill it. But this dilates the bronchioles. How is it? Too hot now. Too hot? That's fine. I take it off. You will find that in the third, second and third, I won't have to do it this much. But it's quite fine. You've got to work with your patient. But this brings incredible relief to a, uh, to a congested chest because the steam, how's that? Yeah, it's fine. The steam penetrates through the chest wall, penetrates right in and just opens those bronchioles. Mm -hmm. It's about time. Just when the patient's getting nice and comfortable, you're nice and comfortable, <laughs> we take the cloth off. And you wrap him up quickly because you don't want him to chill and you throw that away. And now we have the... Now we apply the ice cloth and he's looking forward to this. You're not allowed to scream, you're on camera. <laughs> He's laughing, it's a good sign. But it's actually nice when it's so hot, isn't it? He didn't agree. <laughs> Never let that chill. We, and we want a good 30 seconds cold, and that was only about 10, wasn't it? It's good fun, isn't it, Joshua? Yes, it is good fun. And you see why we're doing the cold, because we want that reaction. We want the blood coming to the area. And even with this lovely dark skin, I can see a big red patch on Joshua's chest. Now you dry it, and you must not have any moisture on that skin, because it's the moisture on the skin that could burn. Now that was the hottest pack, the, one that, the first one I did. His skin's a little bit used to it now, and now that he's had um, the cold, he can handle it a little bit hotter. So that was the hardest. And here's a strong young man, and I had to lift that about four or five times. That's all right. That's all right. You've got to work with the person. Now, um, maybe someone who was in their 50s or 60s, I might have to lift it 10 times. That's all right. That's all right, because you know that after the cold. Now, you see, even with that cold, um, Joshua's chest is not cold. So now I will not use that cloth because it's a little damp. It must be a dry towel that you put on. Because remember, it's the moisture on the skin that could burn. And that's why I keep putting my hand on to take that moisture off the skin. And the moisture on the skin is basically Joshua's perspiration reacting to the, to the heat. I've got another thinnish towel. Like this. So I dip it in. Boiling water is best. You can always cool it down, but you can't heat it up. Now, ideally, after the cold, um, see that? See that's hot almost straight away. That, what, um, what is the best thing to do now? You can sponge the whole person down, and I'll demonstrate this with one of um, Joshua's arms, and he'll probably like it if I don't demonstrate his whole body. So you get a cloth, and we'll get this arm here. And yes, he's very warm, and I just go over. <laughs> and then I dry it. It's all right, Joshua, relax. I'm not going to do it to your whole body. <laughs> so that, because his whole body will be hot. And I'll just do a full 30 seconds to his chest, because this is the last one. and take that heat out. Now I'll um, use a bit of cold water to finish the hot foot bath on the feet.
So if you just lift your feet up over there, yep, and he's got nice strong abs so he can... A little bit of a reaction there. <laughs> just, that was cold water. There's a towel, you can put it straight down on the towel. And it's over. So it actually doesn't take that long. Okay, you can put this down around you. Yes, that uh, last part, the, um, the most important part, as uh, my good old friend, Dr. Wes Youngberg, he said, Lito, after the treatment, one of the important part is, of course, pray with them but he need, they need to have a rest, at least 30 minutes rest. Even longer, the better. Great. Now, he, this is the last one, uh, last of the video, steam inhalation. Inhalation, here you go. Steam inhalation therapy is a powerful, simple treatment that you can do just about anywhere in any kind of a setting. The definition of steam inhalation is directed water vapor from a source of boiling or steaming water to the nose and mouth area. The act of breathing water vapor to treat nasal or upper respiratory congestion, irritation, or dryness. Here are the effects of steam inhalation therapy. It keeps the nasal mucous membranes from excessive drying, loosens secretions and stimulates discharge of mucus from the lungs, the throat, upper respiratory passages, Relieves spasmodic breathing in the throat and sinuses, like with allergies or asthma. Relieves upper respiratory tract from irritating substances, air, those kinds of disturbances. Relieves inflammation and congestion of the upper respiratory tract. So here are some indications for steam inhalation. Coughing that you cannot control. Congestion in the lungs, nose, throat, or the sinuses. Throat irritation or dry mouth. Irritations from allergies. This is going to relieve those symptoms. To loosen dry or thick secretions in the respiratory tract. Contraindications or precautions are the following. Extreme young children or the very elderly who may not be able to respond to heat well. Clients with severe compromised cardiovascular systems or congestive heart failure may find humid air hard to breathe. Avoid burning clients. The latent heat in steam burns very quickly. The equipment needed for steam inhalation is the following. Obviously, a heat source, such as a hot plate, maybe the stove top, a rice cooker, a bowl of extremely hot water. You can also use a portable steam inhaler purchased at a local drugstore. A pot of water, half full, if using the hot plate or the stove top. Essential oil of eucalyptus or pine can be optional. A large towel to drape over the head and trap the vapor. A dishpan of cold ice water and a washcloth. A shower cap can be optional if you're treating a lady maybe that does not want the humidity to mess up her hair. Extension cord if using a hot plate or a rice cooker and you're far away from an outlet. Remember to pray with your client. This gives them the opportunity to be in the presence of God who is the great physician. The procedure for the steam inhalation treatment is the following. Choose the heat source and preheat accordingly. If using essential oil, add one to three drops in the hot water. Explain the treatment to the client, clearing for precautions, and take vital signs. Have your subject remove eyeglasses and jewelry if applicable. Provide a shower cap to keep humidity from the hair if the client prefers. Instruct the client to lean over the heat source as they hold the towel over their head, including the heat source to trap the vapor. Instruct the client to breathe deeply and slowly as they are able. 
keep the heat source simmering throughout the duration of the treatment. Be cautious so as not to burn the client. Continue for up to 20 minutes. Remove the heat source and cool the face with the washcloth for 30 seconds. Retake the vital signs and record the treatment. This treatment can be repeated every three to four hours while the symptoms last. Amen. Amen. Thank you. And I hope you've been blessed with all these um, um, instructional videos for today. And we're just going to have to close uh, with a prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you again for this natural healing that comes from you. Father, we, without you, none of these will work. For it is you that heals us. My Father, thank you so much. In thy holy name, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Almost ended, and holy Sabbath cheer fills the universe. The angels gather near, but not many people notice the joy that.